entrepreneurs since we've started this series. But then there is Jody Deerling, and oh boy, what an interesting young man. He is eclectic, he's a ball of fire. He really is an incredible entrepreneur, and he is on his way to establishing an empire. Is it possible to start a business with 20 Rand? Is it possible to move from being a one-trick pony with bow ties to building a fashion accessory business? One entrepreneur threw all sorts of caution to the wind and firmly established himself as a fashion brand to be reckoned with. From scarves to aprons, from laptop bags to sling bags. If you can think it, they can stitch it and deliver it on time every time. Let's meet the fearless entrepreneur behind the Jody Dealing brand. Lady P, my word, finally you invite me to the villa. <laughs> I did exactly the same. So lovely to have you. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, Thank it's you. really, really good. I mean, it's. I know it's a moment and I know we're joking, but it's a real moment for us too, you yes. know, looking at your journey, celebrating what you've really managed to do and accomplish over the years. Absolutely incredible. How often do you reflect or reflect on your own journey? I think not often enough, to be honest, uh, because obviously you're on the journey, you know, so you're, it's very hard to have those pause moments where you're going, this is where I am now. Yeah. So it's very difficult, I think, because you're always a part of the hustle. You're always a part of what's new, what's innovative, what's fresh, and the better version of yourself, you know? Are you always chasing? I mean, do you feel like you, you're always going to find the thing? Or does it sometimes be like, no, I, I think I found it? Um, so I think that question has two answers for me. In my personal capacity, I'm no longer chasing. I'm very grateful for that moment, um, finding peace with Jody. And then in the industry I find myself in and the business I'm building, there's always a chase, mm. you know, staying ahead of the curve, staying ahead of the game, understanding what's coming and trying to find solutions, you know, before the problems actually hit you, so to say. If they even ever do, you know, yeah. So let's take it back a little bit. You yes. were not born in Johannesburg. No, 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 no. I was born in one of my favorite words right now. <laughs> tell me, tell me. A change from Port Elizabeth to Quebec. <laughs> and I am obsessed with that name. So I am Jody from Quebec. Yes. And and was was the city of Johannesburg the dream? Um, okay, so it started for me when I was at home, um, in my parents' home, and I was watching Yo TV and the kids on TV were like resonating with me and I felt like it was overseas. The opportunity then was uh, blessed upon my life to relocate to Pretoria, went to art and drama school. Before I knew it, Mandisa Nakana was walking past me, who was a legend in the YoTV and the kids industry. And before I knew it, I was on the show being interviewed for another soapy that I was on. And as I left the set, um, someone, Silna, who was the producer at the time, came to offer me a job as, as, as I was walking away. And she was like, what are you doing now? And I was like, so for me, it's like, yeah, it's insane to think that, you know, that the journey of attraction is so a part of it. And, and, and that's where it started for me, actually. Can, can you remember what your own dreams were? So, so was it sort of like, as you're saying, you're watching TV and it felt like, wow, I can resonate with that. Yeah. Was that, was that it? Was that the, this thing that you couldn't quite call, but mm. it just felt like, yeah, I could belong there? It was my name. I don't know, but I saw my name in lights. So there was some power in, I even did some research as I was, you know, becoming to understand what the power of names were, you know, and in South Africa, it's so beautiful because everyone's names have real meaning, you know. So for me, understanding that my name carried weight um, upon my life, why was I given this name as Jody Lee Dealing? And why am I here in this time? And what is my purpose? So I think it's, it starts around the name. Let's talk then about yes. the name. So I think why it resonated with me, because I could literally sit here and say, Mandisa Nakana from Yo TV. I think the connection was that TV was a powerful medium to have the rest of the country know your name. Mm. And I think that's how it started 
started for me to understand that, okay, um, I have a talent, it's raw, because so listen, I wasn't going to be studying for anything. <laughs> you so, know, though that you knew you had a talent so early on, it's a gift, eh? It's, uh, it's been a blessing. Yeah. It really, really has. And to understand that and to understand your purpose behind what it is that you are meant to be doing, I think that on its own is where the blessing actually originates from, you know? It really is. Be people search for, for years, yes. for a lifetime. And you knew early yeah. that, you know, there is something special about me. There's yes. Something wonderful, something that needs to be behind lights or in front of the lights. Yes. But it's funny because at the time, I think you all think that everyone else feels the same way. You know what I mean? That's not as if you, I felt special. Mm. I just felt in that moment that I felt that everybody around me must feel the same way I do, mm. you know? Mm. Um, so I think that for me was, was huge. And understanding that being in a small city, I also knew I was not meant to be there. Mm -hmm. That I knew was, uh, <laughs> I knew because I could see what the glass ceiling was mm. at a very young age for people who were around me. Mm. So to go back to your question, it was Joburg the, the place? I think it was always going to be the starting place for me, mm -hmm. you know, because I knew that that was a platform. It was like New York of South Africa. Yeah. So Johannesburg was definitely where I had to find myself mm -hmm. too. And somehow the law of attraction actually pulled me towards it. And there I was at the Art and Drama School in Pretoria. So I'm going to say when you arrived, because yes. for many it's that, you arrived. When you arrived and you were finally in front of the lights, mm -hmm. did it feel like home? Oh, didn't it just feel like I was back in my mother's womb? <laughs> I was so comfortable. I was like, this is it. This is it. This is it. This is the moment. And everything, it was resonating with me, you know? Every little element became alive. And uh, the, the who found its comfort in the way. Where I was, was exactly who I wanted to be. The moment the lights came on, the moment there was a script on the floor, the moment there was a director, the moment we were interviewing and having conversations in front of a camera, that moment was pure magic. Mm. Can you remember the moment, like I, the day? Yes, the day. yes. So, um... I walked onto set, there was at Urban Brew Studios, mm -hmm. and um, I have a cousin who's in the entertainment industry, and she was shooting Desmond Dube at the time as well. And Lee Duhu, and then, uh, uh, like, uh, as I arrived, so I, I literally felt like I was going home. So she welcomed me, and I went through to the set. I remember being mic'd. I remember this T-shirt, this bright T-shirt, and Byron walking out towards me and greeting me, and um, and then walking into the set and being interviewed. And it was just, and it, it was just incredible. Mm. It was magical. It felt like, it felt like everything I had dreamt mm. it was going to be. It was early though, Jodie. It was very early. It was very early. It, it was like ten years ago when I was fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the gift of getting your dream come true so yeah. early. Did you then think, okay, I've got more to do. I've got more. W was that something that pushed you? Yes, 100%. So with that, the understanding of I'm always looking for the purpose. Yeah. I'm always trying to understand why me, why here. So that happened, and then I re relocated to Cape Town mm -hmm. and shot the most incredible TV commercials, had the most amazing lifestyle there, traveled abroad and did some really great um, international work as well as an actor. And then the moment presented itself again in a reality show. And I was like, no, I'm not doing that. And I was like, maybe I am doing that. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. But then that happened and um, I applied for the Come Dine With Me um, show. And I can't cook to save my life. But again, there was a camera and there was and lights, and, lights and entertainment. So I signed up and I basically got the, the gig, so yeah. to say. Yeah. Did everyone in the small town think you were rich? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> At everyone, all times. Everyone asked you money. At all times, you know. There's no colour attached to it, but the word tax is after it. <laughs> um, so even for, yeah, being young, you know, and I had the opportunity of being in Kabecha, 
when the first flight of Isi Dingo launched and it was so incredible to be sitting with my family and watching my character on TV, which was SABC3 at the mm -hmm. time. It was so amazing to have that moment with him mm -hmm. as well, you know. So then again, going to where we are now, I'm in Cape Town. Um, I'm shooting this Come Dine With Me show. It's incredible. I have the best time of my life. And after the show, with, with this, all these gigs, you know, events that one needs to attend now. And I always wore a little bow tie on every episode that we shot, that was about five. And every time I went to the events, people asked me, Jody, where's your bow tie? Jody, where's your bow tie? So at this time, I am a broke entertainer with a passion for, <laughs> bow, ties. for bow ties. And everybody back home thinks you're rich. Yeah. <laughs> And an emphasis on, I have 20 rand in my pocket. 20 rand. And that moment hit me when someone asked me and they said, Jody, where's your bow ties? And I went, maybe that's something I should be doing. Maybe I should be making bow ties. I've been going for auditions all the time. I'm getting one gig and they're not working for two months. And, you know, so, and I thought, let me find something that I'm going to be passionate about. So I shifted the game from the entertainment into an accessory piece. And once again, the thing that stayed was my name. Could you sew? Could you? Oh, no. Thank Very good question. I still can't sew today. <laughs> but you have the vision. I had the vision. As an entrepreneur, I could see that there was a gap in the market for men mm. with, regarding accessories. And my first accessory was the bow tie. Mm. To such a point that I then took that 20 rand, went to go and buy some fabric, and I found a lady called Auntie Sharifa, and she made my very first bow tie for me in Cape Town. And I packaged them all, went knocking on various doors in Cape Town at these different little um, boutique stores, and finally, someone said yes, and they took in my very first 10 bow ties that I made. So here you are, as you said, you were broke. You yes. Had, you had absolutely nothing. Yeah. The idea comes with your 20 <laughs> 20 and, rand. And somebody buys into that. Yes. What did that feel like? For you? That was different. Yeah. That was different. Yeah. That was an extension of who I truly was and what my capabilities were actually, because to, to give a talent off mm -hmm. that God has blessed you with on the inside and to, and to showcase that, and then to turn it into an external product mm -hmm. and go and knock on doors and someone actually opens the door and gives you the opportunity, that was different. Mm -hmm. That was ordained. That was like a moment where I could not even believe it. Yeah. And it's something that you did. Yes. You know, you took the opportunity yourself. Yes. No one gave that to you. No, no, no you know one. What yes. And in the entertainment industry, what I've become very accustomed to was rejection. Mm -hmm. Are you going to audition. audition upon audition? And people are saying no, no, no. So it was a very comfortable place for me. Mm -hmm. Knocking on doors and people saying to me, no, we don't want this. I was I was like, <laughs> well done, someone else will. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean I'm in my 20s, I'm confident, you know, and I'm here and I'm going. Yeah. And there was a force behind me. That I don't know what it was, because if I look back, I can't identify it. I can't pinpoint it. I can't say, this is what drove me, mm. you know? So they took it. They sold out in the first week. They first called me first week. So let me tell you something. So this, is, this is where I learned the word um, consignment. Yes. So you're taking my bow ties, I want my money. Yeah. They go in, it's on oh. consignment, darling. I go, that's perfect. So here's the bow ties, please give me my money. And she goes, oh. it's on consignment. So that was one of the lessons along the way, understanding that, oh, the word consignment means I'm going to be leaving the product here. And once it's sold, you will be paid. Mm. And a week later, I got paid and immediately took that money and place it and we can buy more fabric mm -hmm. and make more mm -hmm. bow ties and more little containers. That's how the story began? That's how the story began. That's how it started. From that moment, you knew you could do more. I knew I could do more because, again, in terms of the chase, in terms of what's next, what's the innovation, what... So from that, I went into ties, cravats, and then it went into the pocket square, and then it went, for me, going, we have to branch out of, you know, this one sex at this time, so let's see what accessories we can now make for the female as well. And that's how it started, and that's how 
the the journey, so to say, began. How incredible is that? It's, yeah. and, and I mean, it's it's one thing to go into one store for someone to say, okay, Jody, on consignment, leave 10. Yes. And then the big retailer is saying, yes. Okay, let's talk. Yes. Let's talk about a deal. Yes. That jump, how did you get there from mm. the little consignment mm. to the real deal? Yes. So, again, pushing marketing, advertising, understanding the power of YouTube, the power of the social media platforms, understanding that your product is only going to be a product until someone else buys it. Mm. You know, otherwise you're just making pretty things. Mm. So for me, understanding that, yes, I have my first consignment here, but the work only started now. Mm -hmm. So that's when I gave birth to the business. And now there's this baby and I have to basically nurture her now into being able to crawl. So every single time there was an opportunity for a market, I was there mm -hmm. selling the products at the market. Then at the next event, I've got my little table set up and so and so. And then Spree at the time made contact with us. They were looking for accessories. And I went to the building and we had our very first meeting in terms of your question. And that moment happened and I understood that this was big. I mean, I'm absolutely inspired by that because it's almost like there was no stopping you. No, there was no, I don't even know what was driving this, this young Jody, this, you know, 20 something to just be going there and, and to go and take up space. Mm. I think that was the most important thing that I took from it at a later stage. I never knew that is what I was doing at the time. Mm. But being able to go into the spaces and, and feeling as if I belong here. Absolutely. And that for me was the powerful part, you know, in terms again, why and yeah. So Jody, I mean, it brings you now here. You're not broke anymore. We know yeah. this. <laughs> Do you feel like you've made it? Not yet. Not yet. I feel like there's still so much more. Um, because it goes beyond me now. It's not about me anymore. There's a business. There is a staff take at full capacity. We are about 40 people. It's about them now. It's about understanding that they have families. It's about understanding that they also have a journey to be a part of. I was only the starting point. So it's not about me anymore. It's about the business. And is she now walking? Yes, she is. And can we get her to a place of running now is what we'd like to do next. And can everybody who has invested their time, energy and years into the Jody Dilling brand business, can they now benefit from it as well? So that's where we are now. That's where I am at right now as well. And, and what do you wish you knew when you started this journey? Mm, so much, so much. But I think, I wish I knew how to handle finances. I think that would be a very, very, very strong um, one to have managed it better at the beginning. Um, I wish I knew how to invest. Um, I wish I knew that going to take courses and actually going to upskill yourself in any capacity, whether you are someone who is book smart or not, is so important, whether it be a three month course or a, a day little workshop or anything to go and upskill yourself. Um, I think what I wish I knew was the journey would later no longer be about me. Mm. You know, I, I wish I knew that so that I could have fast tracked it to where it is now, to understand that I was merely the vessel that was going to start this and, and hoping, going back to the beginning, that the name lives on even after I'm gone, you know, and understanding that I came here, I was passionate about talent, I was passionate about a skill, I was passionate about marketing and advertising, I was passionate about upskilling others because our motto at the business is called we rise by lifting others mm. so each one teaches one within our organization and i wish i knew that this was going to be where it was going to be because we're 10 years old next year and i think i wish i knew 
I wish I knew that. I wish I could could have seen that, you know? Thank you for coming through. It's my Vela. Hey, thank you. This Vela is everything. I mean, your helicopter. What's next, eh? Thanks, darling. <laughs> thank you, darling. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs>